What's going on, YouTube family? It's your boy, The Educated Weirdo, here today to talk to you a little bit about trading. I'm actually in the middle of a trade right now. I'm in a bit of a drawdown, but uh, nothing to worry about. As long as you have a strategy and you stick to it. And today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about 10 different things to improve your trading. So stick around. All right, you guys, let's get right into it. 10 different ways to improve your trading or to make you a better trader or a successful trader, however you want to word that. All right, let's get right into it. I'm not going not gonna to delay or anything. Um, like I said, I'm in the middle of a trade right now, so I'm watching the charts as I talk to you guys, but I got a little time to kind of, I have nothing but time to actually talk to you guys. So let's get you acclimated with what's going on. Okay, first, first and foremost, you must understand what kind of trader you actually want to be at the end of the day. There's uh, different styles of trading. Uh, we'll go down through the uh, four primary styles of trading. Uh, first, you have position trading. Uh, position trading is when you actually hold a position for sometimes years, months or years, just depends on your end goal. And you're acquiring a certain um, asset or a certain position that you're holding in hopes that it goes up in value over time. And that's how you actually make your profit as a position trader. Uh, now you have swing trading is the next step down from that. Swing trading, uh, you normally you're going to be in a in a trade for uh, sometimes several days, several weeks, different things of that nature. You're basically taking advantage of the small um, fluctuations in price over a duration of time to gain a profit is what you're doing. Similar to position trading, it's just position trading, you're holding positions a lot longer, where swing trading, you're only holding for several weeks or several months. Position trading, you're holding sometimes for years, sometimes decades. Um, next, we're gonna have intraday trading. In reference to intraday trading, Basically what you have with that, you're gonna be holding a position uh, from open to close. So, so basically when the market opens, you might take a position and before the trading day is up, you would have that position closed, whether you're uh, shorting something or if you're actually so selling or if you're actually buying um, in hopes that it goes up in price to make a profit that way. Either way, you wanna be in and out before that particular trading day is over. That's gonna be your intraday trader, okay? Now you have your scalper. Scalper is someone who's in and out of trades uh, pretty fast, man. I mean, they're in a trade for maybe a couple minutes. Um, I've been in a trade before for seconds <laughs> and you know, it hit the goal that I needed and I was out. But uh, you're, you're not gonna be anything longer than at the max, maybe an hour. At the max, maybe an hour. But majority of the time, you're in and out within seconds, minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes at the max. Uh, like I said, if you're pushing it, maybe an hour. That's that's what scalpers do, man. Scalpers, they take hundreds of trades a day because they're getting small movements and they're getting that dollar amount off the small, whatever you know duration of uh, dollar amount they're trying to acquire. They get it off the small movements and they lock them in fast, man. They're in and out, they're in and out, they're in and out. So they, those guys, they don't care if the market's going down, the in and out. If it's going up, the in and out. They don't care. They're going to make their money by any means necessary. I myself, I'm not a scalper, but I have scalped before. I'm more of an intraday trader, but sometimes I do scalp here and there. Very rarely I will do a swing trade. I just don't have the patience for it. I'm, <laughs> I like to see instant results or close to instant results. And uh, when you get into the position trading and the swing trading, it's, it, it takes a little bit more patience. And uh, I just don't have that. <laughs> All right. Now, that was one. I know that was a bit long, but that was just number one. I was breaking it down for you guys. All right. So now let's jump right into um, number two on the top 10 list here. Uh, two is going to be figure out which market you actually want to master. You want to understand there's multiple different markets, man. Uh, you have the Forex. That's what I trade myself. Uh, you have the commodities. You have futures, mini futures, micro futures. It, it's a, a plethora 
of different markets to choose from. They all function a little different, but uh, there's a couple things I'm gonna get into on the list that even no matter which market you jump to, if you listen to me and master these 10 things, you can jump to any market and, and basically stay afloat. Now, I'm not gonna say you're gonna be a master at all of them because it takes time to master each one, but you'll be in a, you'll be in a ball game with the uh, fundamentals and everything that you need. All right, and speaking of fundamentals, I said the word, so <laughs> let's jump right into number three. Number three, you must, it is imperative that you understand fundamental analysis. If you don't understand fundamental analysis, all is not loss, but the way I trade, it's a certain portion, I won't get into the numbers, but it's a certain portion of my uh, overall strategy. So it, it does consist of a, a certain percentage of my strategy is fundamental analysis is why I'm so big on it. Uh, some is different philosophy. Some people say that fundamental analysis is not all that, meaning like you don't necessarily need it. And it's true in some circumstances, but if you're trying to be an overall tra trader, sorry, definitely lock in on fundamental analysis. Okay, next, you must also master technical analysis. Just like fundamental analysis, some people feel technical analysis is not needed and they just strictly go off fundamental. Uh, Warren Buffett, uh, different people's like that. I think uh, Warren is more of a fundamentalist. He doesn't really care for technical. Not, I'm not sure if he knows anything about technical or not, but I know most of the books that I've read, he's primarily talking about fundamental. He doesn't really go in too much on the technical end. But nevertheless, master technical analysis, and I promise you, it will not let you down. All right, and let's say this. Let's say uh, if we were designing a cake and fundamental was one layer of the cake, well, technical would be the second layer of the cake. You was doing a two-tier cake. You gotta have one, can't have one without the other. You got a one layer cake, it's fine, but it's better when you got two layers. So let's, let's just put it like that. All right, so if three and four were layer of cake, one layer of cake, four being the top layer of cake, three being the bottom layer of cake, this next one, number five on the list, would be the icing on top of the cake. And what is a cake without icing? Well, no, some of you are like, oh, it's still a cake, but <laughs> with icing, it's a better cake. All right, so number five is gonna be indicators. Learn how to properly use indicators. There's plethora of indica indicators out there. I won't go through them because there's a million of them. Find you one or two. Um, I, I can't stand a trader that has like 10 indicators on his chart. That's that so many lines and everything's going on, man. You get confused. You're looking at it. You're like, what in the world? You really don't need that many indicators, but hey, whatever floats your boat. You want to use 10 indicators? That's fine. Me personally, I only use two to three. Sometimes I don't even use any. I, I just do what's known as negative trading. But um, I do have two to three that I do like to use occasionally or whatever. And I, and I have those three down packed. So it would behoove you to do the same thing. Get you one or two, get them down packed, know how to properly use them. Now, like I stated, they're only the icing on the cake. So don't try to just get jump into a trade and just strictly use indicators and nothing else. Indicators are not designed to be used like that. They're designed to be complementary to your fundo and your, your fundamental and your technical analysis. So, all right, moving on to number six, you must, and this is imperative also, you must understand proper risk to reward ratios. So there's a certain amount that you do not wanna risk uh, per trade. So basically uh, one to 3% is the rule of thumb. Uh, some people stretch it to five. 5% is being a bit risky if you're trying to do something, you know, trying to grow your account real fast. You might try five, but definitely stick to one to three. Proper risk to reward ratio is a must. It's right up there with technical and fundamental and your indicators and all that. Definitely have to have that down packed. So, all right, number seven. This is a big one also. Well, I, I know I say that on each one. <laughs> hey, honestly, all these are big. So I'm gonna stop saying that. All of these are highly important. Master all of them. 
But um, you definitely want to understand this one. This is going to be, and this is one it took it took me a while to understand this, or not understand it, but to I'm not going to say master it because I don't like to use the word mastering anything because like, no one never truly masters anything. We get good at it. You can all there's always room to improve. So let's just say that. But you want to strive to to be a master at all these actually though. But um, trading psychology number seven, trading psychology. You must understand trading psychology. This makes the difference between a profitable trader and someone who spins his wheel in the mud or either goes in a hole every month, or every week or every day. When you get into a trade, you have to know how to walk away. You have to know how to not hit that that button to jump out of the trade. You, you have to control your nerves. And that's when the psychology comes in. It, it would behoove you to read a lot of books on trading psychology. I read, God, man, I, before I even started trading, I know, I know I read at least five, to seven books on psychology alone, on trading psychology alone. So it would behoove you to probably follow that game plan or at least read one. I know time is of the essence. A lot of people don't have time to sit around and just read books like I do. So you may want to read one or two to get you in that uh, groove of what's going on with the trading psychology. And I promise you that one right there will, will drastically improve your game. Okay, so once you do all seven of those and you kind of get, you kind of acclimated with that, now you want to start getting into, uh, you want to open up a demo account. And a demo account, most uh, brokers all have a demo account. I'm not going to say all, majority of them, but get you a demo account and just just practice man practice you're trading in the lot so you're trading in a live market but you don't have a live account a live account is actually where you furnish um the money and you're trading with live money <laughs> you make a bad move you lose real money demo account is actually trading with the live market but if you lose money is play play it, it's not for real number nine is going to be top down analysis so Top down analysis, just to make it quick, because I don't want this video to get too long, is when you get into a um, a trade and you're looking at different time frames on a trade. So you might be looking at the daily chart, four hour chart, um, one hour chart, whatever chart you're looking at, depending on the style of trading you're doing, just to make this quick, let's say I'm an intraday trader. So I want to do a top down analysis. So my first chart that I jump into, might be the daily chart or the weekly chart. This depends on what's going on. Me, I prefer the weekly chart. So I look at the weekly chart and I see what direction the overall market is going in. Uh, once I determine the direction, I draw up some uh, different layers, uh, support, resistance, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, so I chart up, chart up my charts. Um, after that, I drop down to the next layer. I go down to the daily look and see what's going on. Then I finally jump down to the four hour and do my thing again. And then finally, the actually go into a position because I don't want to get, I don't want to turn this into a video where I'm actually telling you how to do everything. Because I want to do this later on. It's the reason I'm trying to <laughs> pick my words here, you know, not and not go too far in depth. But I jump down to the smaller time frame charts to actually enter the position. And then we go from there. Um, so top down analysis, that's important. I'm gonna do a video solely on that a little later on to uh, get you guys acclimated with that so you can be a successful trader. Uh, number number 10, after you get all this, you wanna go back and you wanna back test. So depending on which broker you have, some have actual um, technology on their accounts where you can actually go back and back test, go back as far as you want. And um, you could take off like, so you might be looking at something and you see exactly what's already gonna happen. So you go back and you wipe it out and you test your theories to see if you can predict where it's going to go, where it's already been, but you're just trying to fine tune your craft, whatever particular strategy you're using, strategy, strategies, or whatever. Some people have more than one strategies, or that's I say strategies. But um, you do those 10 things, man, and you should be pretty good at trading, man, by the end of the day, if you take all 10 of them seriously, Practice them religiously every day. Um, and I, you know what? I'm feeling good. I'll give you a number 11. I know it's a top 10 list, but number 11, this is an important one also. 
Simply believe in your abilities as an investor. You have to believe in yourself, man. If you don't believe that you're gonna be a day trader or you're gonna be a, a position trader, you won't be. It's, it's mind over matter, man. You gotta believe in yourself. Believe in your ability and the rest will fall in place, I promise you. That's, that's, you can take that beyond trading. That's with anything in life. Just believe in yourself, man. I'm the Educated Weirdo. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm about to get back on these charts. I've been glancing at them here as, we, as we've been going. I'm, I'm, I'm actually in the positives right now. Got a certain layer that I want to hit. Uh, once it hits a certain level, I'm just going to let it close itself out. So you guys have fun trading.